Alright guys, welcome back to TARDIS Talk, where we run down the latest episode of Doctor Who, give our theories, thoughts and opinions, and point out a few easter eggs along the way. I'm your host Smack Talks, and I'm joined by the time lady known as Miss Revolution, as we get set to talk to Series 10, Episode 8, The Lie of the Land. This week, seeing the conclusion to the three-part story of the monks, a peaceful species who asked nothing in return for their benevolence, except obedience, guiding humanity and being present at many of humanity's greatest moments, such as the invention of the light bulb or working on the moon, as well as protecting the Earth from the Cybermen, the Weeping Angels, and even the Daleks. Hang on, that's not that's not right. They've only been here a few months. Elle, what's going on? What's your first impressions? <laughs> what I will say, like when I first watched it, I really enjoyed it. But then when I've gone back a few days later, I'm not as fussed on the episode. I, d- I don't know what's gone wrong. I don't know if it's weather because I don't find the monks particularly threatening or what. I, I don't know because when I think about it, there's a lot of things in this episode that remind me of like some of my favourite episodes yet, this one it kind of falls short when you watch it back, so I'm not quite sure where I stand on this one. Hmm. No, I, I kind of get your vibe on this. I feel like I was a little bit disappointed in the episode. It wasn't that it was necessarily bad, it was just that mm. I, I didn't think it worked as a grand payoff for like the two prior episodes. And like I've said last week, it, it just left us questioning even more what was the point of the first part? What was the point of the simulation? Yeah. It just, it didn't come into it. And I thought there had to be some reason for that, um, being the first episode and playing a part in what we guess was like the finale of the three episodes. And it didn't. It just, it served no purpose. It could easily have worked as a two-part story with parts two and three. You didn't need the first one. It was just unnecessary. I think as well because the monks weren't necessarily grand. I think if this, this like trio had been done with say the silence or I know I know we get sick of the Daleks but someone like that that has this huge presence it probably had would have had like this totally different tone but I feel even coming out of this one that I still don't really know what the monks want they took over the world and all they wanted was people to be obedient but they didn't do anything with it they didn't develop new technology they didn't destroy anything they didn't go out of the way to invade other planets it was just as it always was, just the monks were there. And I don't really feel that the monks had this huge path, which they should have done. Yeah, it, it was it was just a strange one. Like, like I say, the monks themselves, that was all a bit weird. We didn't know what they wanted, what the whole purpose was. And mm. I don't know, all, all I kept thinking was, surely we're going to get something, something simulation related to make yeah. sense in that first episode, and it never come. So it just left me thinking, what what was the point in this? All, all I can think is, going forward, there's got to be something probably planned for the finale in which there'll be something happen where it turns out to be a simulation. So someone's going to die, and it'll be like, oh, they're not really dead. It was just this crazy advanced simulation, and everyone's actually really fine. They'll do that shadow test, I can guarantee it. <laughs> that, that's the whole point of it, just to set it up for that finale. And if that doesn't happen then I'm probably just going to have a go at this episode for, you know, the the rest of time. That's how it's going to play out. I think especially with this one, like you say, there's a lot of plot holes like the simulation, like the shadow test, and even you could kind of include the missy things because there wasn't even a real pair for that. It didn't necessarily fit in with this episode. Mm. And even now, Dole said himself, when it come to the monks, was it really time to use Missy? Because even he didn't seem like the monks were that big a threat, even though they took over. It wasn't this huge, like, duff duff East Enders type <laughs> moment where everything had gone wrong, the monks had won. Even though they were in charge, it still didn't feel like they'd won. I don't know, it didn't have that kind of Last of the Time Lords feel where Martha was going throughout, like, the Earth, rallying people. But it didn't have that sort of feeling. Like I said, I don't know if it's because of the monks or what, but it it just didn't have that that gravitation kind of feel to it. It was odd. Yeah, like like you say, it didn't it didn't have that whole emphasis like the Martha one did, and I think that's probably because they pushed all that in one episode. If they'd maybe used mm. the three parts to tell um, Bill's story of how she was gathering an army or whatever else, I think that would have worked a lot better. But obviously, we didn't get that. We didn't get the duff duff. It was just all a bit <laughs> duff, so I was a little bit let down by it. Let, let's talk the monks then, because you've already touched on them. This week, we've seen them rewrite history, including themselves in all the great feats of humanity, making the entire population believe that they've always been there and rooting out anyone preaching anything different with the aid of the memory police and sending them off to labour camps. So 
what did you make of them this week then? You've, you've kind of given a little bit on them. Did you like them overall or are you looking forward to wiping them from your memory as well? <laughs> what I will continually say, I think the design's brilliant. I think to look at, they are quite scary, but they just borrow so much from other traits. Like even the way they manipulated everyone, it reminded me a lot of the name of the Doctor where Clara jumps through the time stream and anywhere that anyone who touches that machine thinks of, the monks are there. The mm. whole thing with the electricity was like the silence. Even the way they adapted the perception and how they can change people's memories, that was like the silence. And that whole shield thing just looked totally stupid. But I, I don't know, I, I kind of feel that there needs to be an episode where we either get their origins or what they're all about to kind of make all of this worthwhile. But at the same time, because I've not really enjoyed all three of them fully, I don't know if I really want it either. Yeah. No, I, I, I get what you mean because I feel the same. In that way. And I like the fact that you've brought up those comparisons to the silence because they do seem to have like quite a lot in common. So based on the looks, I kind of picked up on that anyway. Mm. I think a lot of people did when you've seen the hand in the trailer initially. But yeah, you bring up some like really good points there um, relating to the two of them. I don't know how I, how I kind of feel on them. I, f I feel these should have been a much bigger force to be reckoned with. And yet they, they didn't yeah. seem to come across as anything you know, majorly powerful, which is crazy. I think last week we're seeing all these feats of power where they'd launch all these attacks on the monks and the monks would be like, <laughs> yeah, right, as if that's going to work. We'll just, we'll take a submarine and we'll <laughs> place it over here next to a pyramid. We'll, we'll transport all your pilots out of the plane. We'll take their place. So it's like we're seeing all this amazing, like, power that they've got. And yet this week it, it all seemed to get wasted. They didn't seem to do anything with it. I mean, they got shot down by the Doctor's bumbling security team. They even they looked Bill in the face and they didn't think, oh, hang on, if she's going on this boat where the Doctor is, that, that could be a bit of a problem. Instead, they just let her on. What, what's what's going on? They, they just seemed, I don't know, all this power <laughs> and they didn't do anything with it. I, I don't know, Ali, I found it really strange the fact that Bill was the one who changed the entire thing for them, yet they didn't recognise it. I couldn't decide if it was like a point between either them being too cocky and overconfident or just being plain thick. And <laughs> all this time, like, I was waiting to see this huge power figure. And even then, I don't know if that was the one in the chair controlling everything, but he didn't have a monologue. He didn't do anything. And he just basically sat there, kind of like what the monks themselves did. They just kind of played a part in the background. And I, I, I just was thinking the entire time a lot because I compared them to the silence that I was going back to that thing you said of maybe because they can take on other forms, maybe they are a form of the silence and they've done this so that when the humans do see them, they won't shoot them on sight. And I don't know if that's why I didn't like them as much, but it never came and there was never this like unveiling moment of who the monks were, what they represented, this, that, and the other. And it all just fell short. And I don't know, like, I say, I'm in that awkward position where because they didn't bring that much to the table, I don't know if I want to see them again or not. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We didn't really get any answers whatsoever. This should have been the episode where we found out more about them. But instead, they defeated and they just sodded off. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> The what off the left one? Yeah, they just, they just legged it. <laughs> so yeah, it it was strange. Like like you said, we didn't really get that. You know, the sort of emperor or whatever you want to call it, the person that's in charge of them. We didn't really see anything aside from like the one that was actually in the chair and was feeding out the memories. But I, I don't know. It just it felt like once again we learned absolutely nothing about the monks. We didn't know what the real reason was for them coming. Did was it simply just a case of they did want to be loved, they wanted to be a part of humanity, and there wasn't any ulterior motive. Are we bad for thinking what's the ulterior motive? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Surely that would be something, but we didn't get it. They simply got defeated, and they left. Yeah, they just like put up these ugly-ass monument things, and they wanted to control people, but like I said, they didn't develop any new technology. Fair enough, they helped defeat Cybermen and Daleks and things, but... That was to help the humans and hmm. they just put everyone in the labour camps, but we don't know what they were making, what they were doing with the labour camps. It was just all like, well, we're in control and that's it. 
<laughs> it was. It was just all strange. Maybe, maybe that was just the case, though. Maybe they just wanted to be loved. That that was that was it. That's all it was. Just looking for love. Well, they certainly lonely. failed with that one. They did. They failed. Well, that's them sodden off. Let's move on then. Let's talk that scene because before we get to the resolution, we did have, did have the scene that everyone was talking about from the trailer. That regeneration, is it going to be real? Is it going to be fake? Is it a red heron? Is he regenerating? What, what's going on? That's what we're all questioning. And it turned out it was a fake regeneration. The doc was simply testing Bill, fooling us all. Did you see it coming? Were you disappointed? What did you make of it? Mm, well, I, I definitely didn't see it coming. I, I think I felt, I felt kind of cheated. It it felt really cheap, like they were having this big, powerful moment where the Bill was betrayed by the Doctor because he'd aligned with the monks and everything that he doesn't represent. And I think even cheap in that whole thing with Bill where she's in the right and she has to kind of make the Doctor pay for aligning himself. But by doing, I don't know, it just felt really, really cheap. And it was like, really built up promos around this it was kind of a lot of the first trailer like that was a focal point fair enough it was a good way to make people watch but Mm. by doing so it felt really really cheap and it was like did he really need to be that cruel and go that far yeah well it was strange it worked as a means of getting people to actually tune in and see what was going on with it but the fact that it was just purely the doctor just lying faking it I, i come out with thinking what? What What just happened? <laughs> really? Oh, that's disappointing. That, that was kind of my reaction to it. It just, I don't know, it felt like such a letdown because we talked about it leading up to it and said, you know, this is just going to be Stephen Moffat just playing with it all, just building it up, making it look like it is going to happen and then it doesn't or he postpones it. It wasn't even that. It was completely fake. So I don't know. I just felt really let down. I think there's so much that they could have done with it. And the fact that the Doctor had spent, like, the last couple of episodes blind and struggling, he could have regenerated then. Mm. It was like, well, maybe he doesn't want to regenerate. And again, we see him do that and he holds it off. But no, it was just completely fake. So I felt really let down by it. I totally agree. It, It just felt like it really didn't need to happen. Fair enough, it was this ultimate kind of test for Bill, but... Because of the way he'd done it and resorting to kind of forcing Bill to shoot him, it felt really cruel. And even I was judging that had he gone too far. I know it's something we've talked about throughout the series and about that whole line, which side's good and which side's bad, and that very fine line of crossing it. And it kind of felt like the Doctor had gone that step again. And even throughout the episode, I remember looking at the Doctor and quite a few times he had this like maniac look on his face and I didn't quite know where he stood even after... Um, he announced that it was all a kind of trick. Yeah. He still had that demeanor about him and he didn't necessarily look good. And I don't know if someone kind of made me shoot them and it was all like, hey, it's a trick. I don't think I'd be too happy. Well, that was the thing. It was all a bit strange. Even seeing the doctor acting like that just to see what Bill would do. Even after that, I was watching with the subtitles on and it got the point where the doctor decided rather than sneak back into the country, you just crash the massive yeah. ship into it. That was like, hang on, why? And the subtitles were actually like <laughs> maniacal laugh as, as he yeah. was laughing at it. And it was like, okay, that, that doesn't seem very doctor-like. But that whole scene leading up to the regeneration, it, it didn't feel doctor-like. It felt weird the way he was doing it and the way that he mm. was testing it. I actually felt sorry for poor Bill. And yeah, it, it must have really affected her to see Bill actually pick up a gun and shoot the doctor. Someone that, you know, she's, she's let the monks in because of this this love for the Doctor and wanting to save him. And yet the next episode, six months later, she's ready to shoot him to try and save the <laughs> Earth. It, it, was all, it was all a bit weird seeing that happen. But I will say it, it did play out in a really good scene. I was really impressed with yeah. that and the way that that was acted. So I, I really enjoyed that. It was just the fake regeneration, just let it down. I think that was the thing, like it was building up to this brilliant moment and Bill, for me, she's finally cemented. She's been doing great anyway, but this kind of cemented like her place as a companion. And I definitely want to see more of her. I don't want to go this like the next series. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, it's a trick, and it's just like, really, do you have to go down that route? And 
Oh, I, I don't know. I just think the whole regeneration thing came off so cheap after like such a brilliant moment where Billy's kind of getting really fiery and just the fact that she resorted to killing someone kind of speaks a lot. And then it was like, well, surprise, it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a weird one. It must have really affected her for actually mm. like, go that, take those steps of actually shooting the doctor. So yeah, I, I felt really sorry for her. Let's move on then, let's talk the resolution. As Missy helped the Doctor realise that they were using Bill to transmit the corrupted view of history at the planet with the help of the statues that they directed to boost the signal, with Missy revealing all the Doctor had to do was kill Bill, something that he obviously wouldn't do, leading to the alternate plan to broadcast his own memories of human history and give the people a true glimpse of history. Unfortunately, though, this didn't work, and after the Doctor was knocked out, Bill stepped in to sacrifice herself for humanity, connecting herself up with the machine and overloading it with the memory of her dear mum. So, two questions. What did you make of the resolution to this, and how do you feel about Bill sacrificing herself to save the planet? This is, like, another one where I think it's, like, the episode itself. Some of it I love, and then some of it I'm like, really? Doesn't make that much sense. Like, the whole thing with Bill tying the Doctor down, that reminded me a hell of a lot of Forest of the Dead, where River ties the Doctor up and does what has to be done because she knows that the Doctor won't let her do it and Bill kind of takes the exact same role, ties him up and does what she knows that he won't let her do and kind of goes with it and I thought that was really powerful and just yet again prove that Bill does deserve to stick around but then when it goes into the whole thing about her mum kind of being the way to save it, it was a bit like, that come out of the left field. (laughs) Yeah, it was. It was like, it was a resolution that I really really didn't see coming i will say though i did love the fact that you know bill stepped up and sacrificed herself for the planet and it seemed seemed quite fitting because she'd done it to defeat the monks with an act of true love which when you think about it was exactly the same thing that brought them in in the first place so Mm -hmm. I, i thought that was like quite quite a good way to do it obviously i think stepping up was probably down to the fact that the doctor also pointed out it was all her fault but I love the fact that, you know, we got more of Bill's character and she was actually there ready to sacrifice herself for the Earth. When really, if you go back and think, you know, it's only been a few episodes, a few adventures with the Doctor. And we've seen this entire change through Bill. She's gone from being the person that was ready to run away at the sight of trouble. And now she's there at the forefront, putting herself forward and trying to save everyone. I think that's what I love about Bill. She's not quite to the standard of where Clara was overpowering the Doctor and becoming more of a Doctor than what the Doctor was. Mm. Yet, Bill's kind of... It's it's a funny one. I, I kind of feel Bill is doing the same in one sense on paper, but it's a totally different thing. She's kind of like the rogue. Kind of... It sounds really strange. Doing like the sort of things like um, Jenna Ursa does in like Rogue One where she does what has to be done. Some yeah. Something that nobody else will do and kind of stand up for what's right and what ha- should and what will be done and things like that. And that's what I really love about Bill. She's, she doesn't have that sort of, I don't know, this sort of like intelligence, not all that Claire and things had. She Bill just kind of follows her heart and does what's right. And that's what I really, really love about Bill. And mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it is though, you're right. It, it's like a good thing to like see that kind of character and just, you know, the fact that, Bill has all these connections with the characters and, you know, she really feels for them, especially the Doctor. And she's willing to do anything to save them, to save everyone. So I I, I liked it. I didn't see the resolution itself coming, like the way it played out, like you Mm. mentioned. But I don't know, at the same time, I like the fact that she brought them in with that act of true love. And it's kind of the love for a mother, the mother that she never knew, that's actually defeated them and overpowered the monks. So I, I like that. I like the fact that they're also kind of tied it in with the fact that throughout the season she's been talking to her mum and that kind of concentration, that trail of thought, having that conversation, that's the thing that she used to focus on and block out the monks and was able to overpower them. So maybe it didn't make a lot of sense overall, but I think in terms of the story and the way the season's progressed, I did like it. And it also brought in the whole photos from the first episode, so it gave more reason to them. Mm. So I, I I can't really complain that way. I liked it. The only thing I would say is Bill sacrificing herself the way that she did. It didn't feel like it had a huge payoff in the way like a Clara or someone else would because Bill's still a relatively new character. So I don't think we've, yeah. while we've got a connection with her, we haven't got that major connection where the thought of 
you know, Clara in the previous season actually like offering herself up and thinking, no, don't, don't let Clara die. I, I, I can't deal with that. What? <laughs> Bill, it, it was like, yes. Oh, that's nice of her. Oh, she, she's sacrificing herself. Oh, poor Bill. But it wasn't like, no, don't do that. Don't, I, I can't live without Bill. So it was, it was a strange one. It just felt like if this had come later on in Bill's time in the Doctor Who, it would have felt a lot more. But it, it still had great meaning. Don't get us wrong. It just, I think it was a bit early to see us sacrificing herself. See, I think I'd kind of go the totally opposite. I know for all, I, I really do love Bill and I want to see him go more. I think it would have been so much more powerful to have actually killed her off there and then and have the rest of the series pull out between um, Missy and the Doctor. Because throughout the episode, Missy was kind of taunting the doctor of saying what his ideal of good was being vain and sentimental and things so it would have been good to see how the doctor because he hasn't necessarily done the right thing with this whole blind thing and it was his fault it yeah. would have been good to see that wing on the doctor's shoulders and i think it would have had that sort of i hate to say it again but the whole genesis type thing it makes it so much better because she died early before something can go on too long and i think that would have been a huge standout moment having a companion die mid-season or something yeah no that would have been a cool moment actually like to have that happen mid-season i mean again poor bill killing her <laughs> off mid-season that's quite evil that is you're taking missy's part in this so yeah it would have been a good change because we don't really see like companions properly killed off as we found mm. out with clara um so it would have been cool to see that and then see how the doctor kind of deals with it and what happens with missy because I, I think the way the things are playing out, we're going to talk about Missy next, but that that the whole relationship between the Doctor and Missy, I kind of feel that rather than save that for the last couple of episodes, it would have been good to like have that play out throughout the second half of the season because there's probably yeah. a lot more that you can actually tell with that. Definitely. And I think that's going to be something throughout the next few episodes where I think we're going to see which side Missy and the Doctor come on because it looks like the lines are starting to blur and the doctor's not not always necessarily good and now missy's kind of showing that she does want to repent and she wants forgiveness for the things she's done and she knows what she's done wrong yeah well we've covered the story itself and so let's let's fully talk about missy this week is not only did she help the doctor on how to stop the monks but that end scene which you've just mentioned we've seen her showing remorse for the people that she'd killed and even appearing to cry and feel pain at not actually knowing the names well, the tears really real, or was this was this all an acting master class? Oh, very funny. Um, I I think overall, I think we all know that this probably isn't the true Missy, and it's just one big master plan, like you said. Hmm. But I kind of, I wasn't really keen on this Missy, like other side at first. I wanted full maniac Missy, but it kind of gives a new duality to Missy, and I kind of want to see how they're going to explore it. Well, I do, but like, like I say, being like just the last couple of episodes that she's apparently confirmed for, it feels like it's it's only going to be a little time that we get to see that. I would love mm-hmm. to see this actually playing out over the course of not even just half the season, but the entire season. I think this could have worked really good. Although I will say, I don't believe it. Not for one nah. second. There's, there's no chance, no chance <laughs> in hell that Missy's going to be good. I just, I just don't see that happening. She, she's bound to be playing the Doctor and plan to double cross him further down the line. The, the only way I could see a good Missy working is if, you know, she tries to be good and ultimately it, it costs her her life and she ends up dying and then regenerates and a new regeneration is just com- completely evil, like way, way evil. <laughs> and it's just undone all the work that the Doctor's been doing. I can't see happening. It's not going to stick. Well, I think that's the thing. If, the, like I said earlier in the series, when they had the whole, the vault explained and it was Missy inside the vault, if they'd have had the execution thing with Missy from the very start and explored this whole Missy wants to repent for her sins and things like that, if we'd have had that throughout the series, I think that would have been a lot better. We didn't need full-on episodes with Missy, just a few minutes, and that would have been really good. Hmm. And I think because of that, I think we're going to lose a lot of scenes with Missy where we won't get to see her be as... Um, as much as a maniac because there's not that many left and I, w- I would have kind of liked to see how deep they would have explored the whole what is good because obviously the doctor's got his version of good and yet Missy says the doctor's 
version of good is not absolution. His version of good is arrogance. Um, he's vain and he's sentimental. So it's not necessarily pure good, but it's the doctor's version of good. And who we don't really know what Missy's version of good is. Is it just the fact that she now feels sorry for the people she's murdered? She remembers the names or, well, even the fact that she was willing to tell the doctor how to save the world, even if it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. She was still willing to give up the ideas of how to do it when the doctor probably did know what it was, but he just didn't want to say it out loud. Yeah, maybe he was testing Missy then, the same way that he tested Bill, to see if she'd come out with the reason for it and he'd actually help her. So it could have been that. Like like you say, I think if, if we had the execution scene in the first episode and then he'd like continuously gone to Missy for our help, then that would have even been a good way to kind of play it out. It it just all seems that we've got a lot of kind of time wasting with the vault mm. and then brought her into it and we're still just getting little bits and pieces leading up to this like last few episodes. So I, I think it could have been done better, but I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Yeah, I, I definitely can't wait. And like I said, I, I do think we're going to see the lines blur even more where we've had the doctor be kind of cruel with his test lately, not only on Bill, but like you say, Missy as well. So I, I kind of hope they explore that a little bit more. I know we've got a few scenes in the next episode that are supposed to be quite intriguing. So hopefully it's something to do with that. Hopefully. Let's move on then. Let's talk Easter eggs. As this week, we had Missy play another two tunes on the piano. We had the first one being Nocienne, which is by French composer Eric Satie, and the second one being the much easier to pronounce The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. Then we've seen a bunch of Magpie Electricals in which the crowd were watching the Doctor's broadcast, with Magpie Electricals being the shop in which the Wire tried to invade in the 2006 episode The Idiot's Lantern, as well as going on to appear on various props throughout the series, and even still being in business in the 2010 episode the Beast Below, an episode that we've already referred to in previous episodes this season. Then finally we also had shots of both the real Winston Churchill and the actor Ian McNeese who played Churchill on the show. So there you go, there's a few little Easter eggs, but let us know in the comments if you've spotted any more. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of TARDIS Talk, but make sure to get involved, let us know your thoughts on the episode, as well as your theories for the season in the comments, as well as following us on Twitter at TARDIS underscore talk for live reactions, tweet alongs, and more Doctor Who goodness. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode, but I'm off to complete a 3,000 word essay on the mechanics of free will, so all that's left to be said is until next time. See you later.